Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I'm Alex Payton. And I'm Ollie Bridgewood. Coming up this week, we've got some magic glasses, free electricity, the bike equivalent of a monster truck, some cobble classics tech, a competition, and a discount for everybody. And our main talking point this week is step aside graphene, because there's a new wonder material in town. We're going to be discussing that. I'm excited about that. Oh, me too. Right, on to our main talking point then. This week, we're talking about a new wonder material. Step aside, graphene, because now we're excited about borophene. You're a borophene. Thanks. <laughs> so borophene is another 2D material like graphene, which means it's made from a one atom thick layer of, uh, of well, atoms, but not carbon atoms like graphene, boron atoms. Makes sense. And, yeah, it does. Um, so it's said to be stronger than graphene, even stronger, yeah. and more flexible. Also said to conduct heat and electricity. Correct. Yeah. It is, but it also it's a superconductor as what, well. What's a superconductor? Superconducting materials are ones that when, well, usually you freeze them to cryogenic temperatures, yeah. at which point then they're able to conduct, but with zero resistance. So that's why it's good for batteries and stuff? Well, no, it has other industrial oh, applications, okay. but scientists are really excited as, as it could be, well, the, the, it could be used in the anode of, of next level batteries to make them amazingly good. So you think- Super range. Th yeah, think of your e-bike, your electric yeah. car, also chemists, they're entranced. Do you look entranced by it? I'm no longer a chemist. Oh, okay. They're entranced by its, its catalytic potential. So it could, it, it could turn water into hydrogen. I mean no, that hydrogen powered bike. I mean that does all sound incredible, but hold on a minute. We've heard all this before. It's going to revolutionize the world. The industry's going to change. We held this with graphene. 2004 graphene was discovered. What's this uh, 18 years ago? Do I have a graphene bike? No. No. Therefore I'm not super impressed just yet. And like a million euros was invested into graphene technology by the EU. Yeah. Where's all that money now? Other countries as well. We haven't got anything to show for it yet. There's loads of products that are so-called use graphene in them, but I can't tell the difference between something that's got graphene in it and carbon fibre. I got a bit of a rant, I got that off my chest then, thanks. Well, these things certainly take time, and more time than I think anyone else would like. But the big fundamental problem with graphene and also borophene is that they're made of a one atom thick layer of atoms, so it makes it very difficult to scale them up into the real world, into something that you could actually hold and use. Well, so on that basis, so one atom thick, what does that relate to, say, to human hair? How thick's that? So human hair is roughly a, a million carbon atoms. A million? Thick. Yeah. For one hair? Atoms are very small. Okay. So if, if you then take uh, graphene yeah. and you combine layers, individual one atom thick layers of graphene together yeah. to scale it up into something that you could physically hold, yeah. you get graphite. Graphite, that's like in pencils, tennis yeah. rackets, back. we got more than enough of those things in the world. Yeah, don't need any more tennis yeah. rackets, don't do we? Anymore. Anyway, so once it's been scaled up and you have graphite, graphite doesn't have the amazing material and chemical properties that one layer does in isolation. So you lose that once you scale it. So that's the big problem. However, researchers may have cracked it. Oh, finally. Alex, we, we might finally be able to get a graphene bike. About time, yeah, how yeah. so? Well, there's sort of two exciting developments that have happened. Firstly, researchers have been 3D printing graphene flakes into objects that you can sort of see yeah. and hold. Layer into by com layer. Complex structures, this is something that they've done at MIT, and the other one is something called Schwarzite. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds like something, some sort of seasoning I'd use for cooking. Well, you could put it on your chips, don't know, maybe it'll make them stronger and lighter. Anyway, Schwarzite is a, a complex a 3D uh, structure. So what you have with graphite, or with graphene even, you got prop. and borophene, it forms flat sheets yeah. of the material. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now we've seen also that you can arrange graphene into tubes. These actually existed before graphene, carbon nanotubes. Yeah. Now a carbon nanotube 
is what's known in, in maths as a positively curved geometric structure. Okay. However, this guy called Schwartz, he, he theorized many, many, many years ago that you could have negatively curved geometric structures. And so these structures are now known as Schwarzites. And they've found that you can make Schwarzite geometric patterns out of graphene. And this opens up amazing opportunities. Sounds like useful products. Yes, because rather than just having lots of single la flat layers, you can then. I can't make a. a can you make me a bike? I can't, <laughs> I can't fold this in a way that it is a. Okay. Sort of but a you get something structure. useful rather than like the flat. Here's surface. a picture on screen of, of, of what I'm trying to describe. But basically, it can be arranged into complex geometric okay. uh, Schwarzite structures. And that will allow us to sort of scale it up bigger and grow these into bigger things, which which is pretty cool. And that's making sense. It does sound very cool. Isn't it? Mm. Now all this sounds like it could be a long way off, so don't get your hopes up just yet. But there are some really cool companies and products out there coming along in the market pretty soon. So a company called Real Graphene, American company, they're making some super fast charging batteries, also with a really good range as well. So this sort of stuff could be great for your e-bikes. Yeah, it's like legit uses of graphene technology now. We're starting to see where it is making a significant difference in the performance. Um, another exciting potential application is within clothing. Oh, yeah. And this is because graphene has incredible thermal conductivity. And one of the big things is when you crash, what you want to try and dissipate as quickly as possible is that heat energy generated by the friction of the crash. Oh, yeah. That's why you get road rash, it's a burn. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so uh, Momo Design, who make helmets for motorcyclists and motorcycles. Oh, automotive riders. industry. Yeah, yeah, Italian company. They've now got a helmet that has graphene on, on the helmet. And, and it improves the thermal conductivity of the helmet so that when you, if you were to unfortunately crash and slide your head on the road, it would yeah. dissipate the heat wow. of that impact better than, than a standard helmet, um, which is really cool. It and is cool. It, it does make you think like, we're probably not too far off maybe having some lycra. Imagine if it had like the graphene. shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, just if that, anything that could just dissipate the heat a bit better, yeah. if it improves your, your road rash, whatever, that's, that's, that could be really cool, couldn't it? That could be a great thing, yeah. I yeah. like the sound of all this, yeah. Mm. Okay, right, all sounds great. So I guess what should we have a poll about this? Do you think there'll ever actually be a graphene bike in what, they're not 10, 20 years or so? Mm. Yeah. Well, they, do we have one already or not? Uh, yeah, just to clear this up before we get a load of comments on this, the, the so-called graphene bike that was made by Dassey, yeah. just to be clear, that wasn't made from graphene. Oh. So, this, yeah, it was a carbon fibre bike yeah. made from carbon fibre with yeah. epoxy resin. Mm -hmm. In the epoxy resin was like graphene powder. Ah, oh, okay. And there have been papers published by scientists in China showing that composites, carbon fibre, yeah. with graphene powder incorporated into the resin can change the properties of that, of that resin and, and help improve the composite. But it's not, I mean, it's a tiny, 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 tiny amount. amount of graphene powder put into the resin. It's not a bike built from graphene. Okay. Well, hello to GCN app. Let us know if you think we're going to see a real life graphene bike in the next few years. Yeah. It's now time for hot and spicy tech, but before we dive straight into that, we've got a little announcement about the Global Bike Festival, haven't we? So Wahoo have now come on board as an official partner of the festival, and as such, when you're there, you're going to be able to demo all of the latest Wahoo products, as well as the fact they're going to be hosting the Wahoo Crank It Up night races. Yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Andre Greipel's going to be there. He's probably really worried as soon as he's seen your 1,000 watts video. He is. He's quivering in his lederhosen. <laughs> Hopefully he is. You actually <laughs> rode with him on um, Swift yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you'll be able to ride with Andre Greipel as well. Yeah, that is so pretty cool. Yesterday. Actually, at the start of the show, I promised we've got a competition this week. So, the competition is to win a Wahoo Element rival watch. I'm actually sporting a new watch today. So if you want to be able to find out on all the details into that competition, you need to head over to the Global Bike Festival page over on Instagram. Sounds good. Right. Well, this week was, uh, well, last Sunday was the Tour of Flanders. Incredible race. Oh, it was good. What a finish. So, I watched the last 60k, actually. Did you? Yeah. If, well, if you missed it, you can catch up on GCN Plus On Demand. And if you didn't see it, like, watch it. It's such you missed it right out. So good. But um, there was some, in, you know, in interesting tech there. Yeah. Notably, the specialised teams uh, were using a new specialised tyre. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a tubeless tire, yeah. but it's as of yet unreleased. Like we've not, we don't know what it was and it doesn't, it had like no uh, name written on the side of it or anything. But a lot of them were using 30 mil as well, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of teams have converted across the 30 mil. You know, go back a few years and it was like 28s were like the wide option. And now yeah. with the advent of disc brakes and slightly wider frames and stuff. And wheels have got wider. Yeah, everyone's going 30 mil. But it was way, like, the sort of standard tire width you'd use at Flanders was 25, yeah. like not so long ago. Yeah. And, and now, yeah, 30 was a lot, seen a lot, and 28s as well. Another tyre, bit of tyre tech, Jumbo Visma. Yeah. Um, appeared to have like a, a, a bit of silicon on the side of their tyres. I did see this actually. Yeah. Um, it was like almost like clear silicon smeared across the sidewalls, but in a really sort of smooth, neatly done way. Yeah, so shout out to Cycling Tips because it was uh, those guys that spotted this. So, w what. There could be a number, a couple of reasons for this, right? So, firstly, having like a smoothing the airflow of the tire to wheel transition to make yeah. it more aerodynamic is something we've seen before. Mavic did it years yeah. ago with like a sort of clip on uh, piece that you could stick onto the side yeah, of the wheel. Yeah, but you guessed it. UCI banned it, didn't they? UCI banned it yeah. because it was counted as a fairing. And so, although it was faster, you weren't allowed to use it. Um, However, so it could be for that, for yeah. that reason. The other thing I was thinking is maybe it's there to sort of help better seal the gap between the tyre and the wheel because they're running tubeless and tubeless can leach air a bit, yeah. especially over the course of a long race. Yeah. So maybe it's just to make it a bit more airtight and have a bit of an airtight seal. I've got a third option maybe yeah. is years and years ago when I used to race cyclocross as a junior, we would have tubular tyres and the sidewalls would get damaged quite easily and then the cotton would rot out. So we used to put sort of this silicon product over the sides and it would act as like an additional layer of protection. I think we, we should get some silicon and try this. Yeah. Next up, 3T have launched a new bike, the Exploro Ultra. Yes, this is an evolution in the Race Max. So the Race Max, as many of you will know, was a, a gravel bike that had been aerodynamically optimised. Now the Ultra is aerodynamically optimised too, but the Race Max was optimised around gravel tyres, whereas the Ultra is optimised around these big 650B wheels and these big chunky boy tyres. Oh, big chunkies. Yes, proper, proper cool. Um, other key feature of it is yeah. that it has a round seat post. So the, the Race Max has an aero sort of D-shaped seat yeah. post. Round seat post means you can now fit aftermarket dropper posts. Dropping making in. It, yeah, more capable <laughs> off-road if you're going down really steep Or descents. on the road as well. Yes, as we, we knew long ago. Well, you knew specifically. We, yeah, we um, we and if you want to see this bike in action, actually Cy and Hank have made a really cool video where they try to see if they can take it all the way up to the top of Snowdon and back down again. Yes, for our um, American viewers, and play people who are viewing in other parts of the world. Snowdon is the highest mountain in Wales. Yeah. It's probably really small compared to some of the crazy ones around the world. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Next up in hot tech, bit of breaking news for here, Ollie. SIS, or Science in Sport, have come on board as a nutritional part that help people like me and you make really cool videos. Yeah. How cool is that? Looking forward to chugging some, some beta fuel. Yeah, and um, to celebrate this, they're actually giving everyone 15% off. You just need to use the code GCN15. Obviously, some terms and conditions will apply to get your discount, but you can check all that out on their website. Nice. Um, we've got some cool crowdfunding tech now. Mm. So we always love a good crowdfunding story. A company called Hindsight, so they had a crowdfunding campaign recently to launch these new glasses on Indiegogo and they've smashed their, their target very oh, yeah. quickly and raised over £100,000. So That's pretty impressive. Yeah, look, look forward to see these sort of glasses materialising. They, um, the way they work is they have a little sort of hidden mirror in, in the corner of the lens that you sort of can't see from the outside, but when you put them on, you can sort of see what's behind you. Pretty cool, they'd be good for spies. Yeah, good for spice. Yeah. I've never really thought about that. Um, something else we just spotted on crowdfunding site, I think it was Kickstarter, this one. It's called the Atom, and it is a little bike generator, electricity generator, sorry. So it goes onto your rear hub, and then as you ride along, it generates electricity, and it charges up a little battery, which means you can then charge your devices as you ride along. So maybe if you've got your phone on your handlebars. And also, when you've arrived at your destination, you can take this little battery pack off and it acts as a power bank so you can charge all your devices up when you're out and about. Yeah, so this, cool. this is on Kickstarter and again, it's, it's another product that sort of smashed its, its fundraising target. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it and see, see how it goes. But Also, same weight of a banana, this little device. Pretty neat. Whose banana? 
Um, one of those little fun size ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's now time for the best bike shop in the world. Well, it's, no, it's not. We've got some snacks. It's now time yeah. for snacks of the week, apparently. Uh, fan of the show, regular viewer, Maya B. She's made some brownies. Oh, incredible. Oh, you cut one out already. Yeah, there you go. She made some chocolate brownies for us. That's nice, isn't it? I'm all right, thanks. She apparently she, offered. she uses these to, um, to, to fuel her time trial in. She oh got, yeah? She got into time trials through watching the show. That's oh, good, good that's job. Good to hear, isn't it? Hopefully all our aero tips are really paying off. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice. It's now time for the best bike shop in the world this week, according to us. And this is part of the show where we just shout out your local bike shops, give them some support, you know, do, mm. a, do a solid for the community. If you want to champion your local bike shop, which absolutely you should, uh, simply go into the uploader on the GCN app. And when you submit uh, photos, go via, go via other the oh. other section, mm. and then you put a hashtag saying bike shop, hashtag bike shop. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but it's okay. important that you do the hashtag bike shop, and that way we can find it. Yeah, we don't want our work cut out, do we? Searching through for everything. It'll go into GCN Megabase Ether. Uh, <laughs> this week, we have got a submission from Bruno Barbosa. Mm. What have we got here? I've lost the name of the place. It's in Portugal, uh, in between Avario and Porto. Oh, it's Grandissima. Here we go. This is what it's called. Check this out. Cars, wow. bikes, and motorbikes. Is that a black edition? Uh, I have literally no idea. But it looks incredible. I'm looking at the, the, uh, the SL that's in there. I'm currently also, looking at the website. Also, is that a Ducati? I think it might be. You know all about Ducatis. You were on the last mm -hmm. tech show we were talking about them. So this is a pretty cool um, looking bike shop boutique, they're calling it, on yes. their website. Wow. Where they list... All of the sort of things that they sell, they do bike fitting, they do, what else have we got? Mechanics, they've got a cafe as well. That looks that looks like a seriously cool bike shop as well. A big fan of the way that, that section there with like the cafe bits, kind of like, it's laid out and there's not, there's, there's plenty of space to walk around. I Super like chilled that. vibes, isn't it? It looks like there's wakeboards there as well. I mean, this is just a, it's like a cool everything shop. activity centre. It looks like a really cool shop. Yeah, I like this. Um, well, I'd be happy going here. It says it's got beer. It says it's beer drinking heaven. <laughs> this sounds like an amazing bike shop. Yeah. Well, if we're ever in Portugal, we'll have to give it a visit. I think it's just south of Porto, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Nice. R okay. Well, fun. right. If, you, if you're in Portugal and you're looking for a good bike shop, then, uh, then there you go. Grandissima. Or, or if you're just super keen, just do a trip specifically out there to visit them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. More um, incredible bike shops next week. It's now time for the Bike Vault. Oh, it's my favourite part of the show. This is where you send in pictures of your bikes and then Ollie and I judge them to be either nice, super nice or uber nice. Yes. And then, um, well, we just go through the list, don't you, we? You submit your bikes on the GCN app uh, under the Bike Vault and uh, you can also vote on other people's bikes there too. I mean, it is a pretty cool feature, isn't it? Yeah, just judging people. Judging right. people by Let's their bikes. <laughs> prepare to be judged. The right. most super nice bike from last week. Look at this. Ooh. It's a Pinarello F. It's from... I don't know how to say the username, myic 3 cr 3 am It probably means something to somebody. <laughs> yeah. This looks incredible. That is an incredible bike though. I mean, look he's at this thing. Lined up, look at those, uh, those big Envy chunky boy wheels are amazing. Right. Look, at the, look at the blinged out jockey wheels on there. The, um, it's, it's got, got the full works, hasn't it? Fancy carbon chain rings. It's just a, oh wow. Are we gonna- Also professional level photography here. I was going to say, are we going to super, super duper bell drop? Bell, bell drop. Uber nice? One. Yeah? Yes, yeah, make sure you pick it up afterwards. Early on. Oh, it's quite a harsh noise, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. That's a set the bar. That's yeah. 7.1 kilograms, that bike, even with those big chunky boys on. Well, impressive. I like that. Yeah. There you um, go. On to this week. First in is from. It's an Encanyon Endurace and it's nice. user 1619766. Catch a username. Not a fan of letters. No. Uh, Welcome to Utah. Life elevated. Welcome to, right, it, it's a nice. Yeah, it's a nice. Big, big, flappy weird sticker left on there. From the Sportive. I mean, he is in Utah. I've heard it's a desert, but those bottles are a, a, a bit too big for my life. Travesty. Yes. Um, it's a nice. <laughs> Next in. Is what's it from Densigo? Densigo? Yeah, it's a giant TCR advanced disc. Murder every name. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, I like this. I it's like it, cool. but dork disc. 
dork disc, valve's not aligned, I'm not, not in the correct I'm gearing. I'm not a fan of the barbed wire backdrop. It's a I slightly know. aggressive backdrop, isn't yeah. it? Uh, nice. Yeah, that's a nice, I'll agree with you on that. Uh, next up we have MC68PYXCZ8. Oh yeah, I know him really well actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, he's got a titanium bike. Oh, T-Labs R3 Omni. Omni. Wow. Oh, I like this. I've this, not seen this. one of these before. This is looking incredible. Very smart. Um, also, look at that shadow stand. Lined up, Biggie Smalls. Wow. It's clean, no clutter. That's, it's got mountain bike pedals. It's built up as a gravel bike, but it's got slicks on it at the moment, which is fair I, enough. I think that's fair enough. There's plenty of clearance in there. Oh, I'm going to hit that with Super Nice. That is a Super Nice. Super Nice. It? I love that that uh, bar tape. I think it's Super Kaz bar tape on there. Very. Oh, it goes really well with yeah, that bike, doesn't it? Just it just matches nicely, yeah. Next up right. is a bike. It's a Villia Zero SLR from Dominique Four. Dominique Four. Oh, it's like a it's like a team bike. Oh, that is very nice. I'm, you know, I really do like those Aston R paint yeah. They would a lot of those were done. I don't know if they're st don't think they're still done there now. But Doctor Bobby, our mate from from Bristol, who oh, yeah? painted a stem for us. He used to do the Aston R paint jobs back in the day. I mean, that's a pretty cool job, isn't it? Yes. Um, he does Cannondale now. But the... Um, I like the fact it's like a really like chromed colour. Yes. I really love nice. that it's got Campagnolo on it as well. Yeah. You don't see enough bikes with Campagnolo. And it's got the fancy Bora Ultra wheels that we rode in the Lake District a year yeah. ago. Was that a year ago? It was a year ago. Yeah. Um, I remember that day. He took us on the hilliest ride you could possibly find. A bit of a chimney, but I'm going to go super nice. Because yeah. everything else is there. All right. I'll, I'll let that slide in. I'll go with that. Max Trek is next with his uh, Jarmus Citizen. From 2001. I can't say I'm familiar with this bike. Um, He's on the turning where he turned left to Epitomar. <laughs> it's precariously positioned. We can't condone that kind we of thing. We can't behavior. condone that. Well, it, it looks a very functional, very functional bike. It's a really, it's a great bike. It's, Do you know, if you, if you go like this, the bike is actually <laughs> pretty well presented. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to say it's a nice. Um, it's a nice. It's still good. We do like it, but it's not a super nice. Yeah. Yeah. Next in is from Moz Kent with a Planet, Planet X Tempest. Tempest. Ooh. Another good looking gravel bike. It is, isn't it? Is it titanium? I can't really tell. It's, I think it might um, be. It's, it's, it's well presented. Yeah. I mean, his he's shrubberies need looking at. Yeah. They do. They and need a bit of gardening work. fence like needs a bit of Ron Seal on it. But uh, do you know what? I think we can. I think we can. I think that's a super nice. Oh, I mean, I, I'm in no doubt about it. Super yeah. nice. Yeah. I like the. I, like, I really like the tyres on that one. Yeah, you can't beat like a sort of tan walled tyre. Yeah. Kane Pilkington is yeah. next with his Dolan Tuono. Teddy Dolan. Teddy. Why <laughs> Teddy Spice? Uh, <laughs> um, cranks. Uh, well, they're level, oh. but the wrong way round. I mean, he's, he's, he's spent too much time on the Ron seal yeah. and not enough time positioning his cranks. If we could combine the last couple of images, we'd get a great bike vault. Yeah, uh, it's a nice. Yeah, I'm going with that, a nice. It's Next. beautifully clean drivetrain. You can eat your dinner off that. Maybe it's almost fresh out of the box. Yeah. Next up is from CDA Wills. CDA Wills with his Peugeot Reynolds 501. This... From 1985, that's before I was even born. Yeah, uh, it... <laughs> Look at it! Look at it glistening on it the do, water. Do you know it looks like a really sort of majestic it's image? Just, it looks like it's in a dream. Yeah, like in a dreamscape. Um, Is it, maybe it's, it's a picture it, of a picture. Like ethereal light. I like it. I also like the uh, thing on the handlebar. Oh, the big honker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, um, I can't. Think, I don't think I can super nice it though. Can you not? Ah, uh, are all the right, valves aligned? Agree. It's nice then. It's nice. Do you the valves are aligned? Right, well, I'm super nice. I'm going super nice. Ah, uh, go on. You're like the most senior. Go on. I'll let you have it. <laughs> super nice. I, I'm too agreeable. Was that the last one? That was the last one. Oh, um, I enjoyed this week's bike. Vibe. It was, it was good, incredible. Wasn't it? I feel like I missed out on it last week. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's good to have you back, man. Oh, good. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show, that's all we've got time for this week. Sad, isn't it? But um, if you have, then, you know, thumbs up, subscribe. Also, share it with your friends if you've got any. Also, keep an eye on GCN Plus for some of the sick races we've got coming up. Can't oh, wait to watch Amstel those. Gold yeah. this week, but then the big one. Oh, Parry Bay. Bay. Cannot wait. I'm blocking out my weekend. Not going to miss a minute of it. Right. Should we go? Yeah. Right, see you later. Bye.